MP to all cars. Armed robbery on security vehicle Julian now. Four to MP. Four men. Off watch. Two to one to MP. Disturbance in High Street. Gang of youths MP fighting with knives. One one. Request assistance over. Suspects on premises now. It's open. Do you know what this is, Brooke? It's a bar of silver, sir. Lift it. Well, it's an ingot of silver weighing uh, well, five pounds. Do you know the value? No, sir. Well, I'll tell you. It's worth 320 pounds. That one ingot. 800 of them were stolen this morning. A van load being shipped from a bullion merchant in Whitechapel. But that's not our ground, sir. No, but the van was abandoned on our ground, and this ingot was found on our ground. So you will have a snoop around your informants and find out who has the other 799 ingots under his bed. Yes, sir. And here's your share of the other complaints. But if I've got to go after my informants... Well, you have extra help? I don't have extra help. I've got a new DC, and I'm breaking him in. Well, you're breaking my heart. All right, I'll give you somebody. Yes, sir. Max? Yes? Our share of the night's complaints. Go through them. Yes, Sergeant. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine? That's not how to count them. Look, these four are all about the walk-in merchant. How many have we got on him? The bloke doing the rooming houses. Um, yeah, eight other complaints. So it's not really four new cases. Just that bloke at it again. Right, what else? Three shops knocked over last night. Well, that's new. An attempted break-in at a factory. Intruder disturbed and made off. We'd better have a look at that. It's likely he then went off and did the three shops. It's yours. Uh, do I go now? No. We've got to go to court first. I've got a lad coming up on a house break-in this morning. He's pleading guilty, so it shouldn't take long. Then we've got a silver job, asking around. Then you can do your shops. Right, get a car, book us out, back about one, magistrate's call. OK. The silver job. Is it a big one? Are you good at figures? Try me. 800 bars of silver, each worth 320 quid. How much? Uh, 256,000. Just over a quarter of a million. A lot of money. Now, each bar weighs five pounds. Uh, that's five by 800, 4,000 pounds. Hey, that's about a ton and a half. And too heavy to carry around. <laughs> it wouldn't fit in your pocket, would it, Sarge? Huh. If it a court, take the first on the left, through the arch, and park in the yard. Right. Have you done much court work? Not much. I've given evidence twice. Our lad is Dickie Fenn, a housebreaker, pleading guilty, which is a help. So I'm putting in a word for him that he's recently married and she's a good influence, so he might get less than he deserves. Right, it's time we were in court. Put up Richard George Fenn. We're just in time. Richard George Fenn, you are charged with having on January the 3rd, 1980, Having unlawfully entered a house... Quickly a guilty, I'm into the box to outline the, the case and speak up for him, then we're off. Richard George Fenn, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honour. What did he say? He said not guilty. I'll have his guts. The plea is not guilty, Your Worship. Then we'd better set a date for the hearing. Uh, two months from today. Can I have bail, Your Honour? Is the police officer in court? I'm here, Your Worship. Detective Sergeant Brooke. Do you object to bail? Yes, Your Worship. Richard Fenn, do you understand that in applying for bail, the officer may now refer to your past record? I understand, Your Honour, and I have no objections. Uh, yes, Sergeant Brooke? The accused has been on remand since his arrest, sir. He's a persistent housebreaker, and in the present case, it's in my opinion... Yes, yes, Sergeant, I can see from the charge what the present case is. But I understand the accused is recently married and that his wife is expecting quite soon. Yes, sir. I hardly think he will abscond, do you? No, sir. Better set him one security of a hundred pounds. Come on, quick, before he's out and away. It's Brooke, Dave Brooke, let us through. In hurry, Dave? Yeah. Is Spence still here? Yeah, he's waiting for his security to arrive. Sitting um, on the second bench along. So, there you are, Dickie boy. 
Not guilty, is he? Well, sorry, Mr. Brooker. Well, I, I had to. Had to? What do you mean, you had to? You were copped to rights and you know it. Four witnesses and fingerprints against you. On a not guilty, you'll go down for extra for wasting the court's time. A straight guilty plea and a word from me and you'd have copped six months. I explained it to you. I, I changed my mind, Mr. Brooke. Why, Dickie? Who's your friend? This is DC Maxton. I'm asking you why. Well, I'm just married, Mr. Brooke, and a, and a wife's a good influence, like you said, and I, I want to be with her at the present time. I had to ask for bail. I'm not talking about bail. I'm talking about not guilty. Do you know how much work you've lumbered me with by pulling that one? I've got to round up all the witnesses again, get their statements, prepare the case, list all the stuff you've nicked, and get the householder to court. There's enough paperwork to keep me busy for weeks. And I suppose you'll want legal aid. I had to plead not guilty if I was to get bail. At least I won't be in jail till the case comes up, Mr Brook. I mean, what needs me? You can't expect any help from me then, can you? No, Mr Brook. Annoyed you, did it? Changing his plea? What narks me is all the work we have to do. You can't blame him. He'll be out of jail for a couple of months when his wife needs him. Needs him? Don't give me that story. It isn't what you think. They've been married five months and she's seven months pregnant. And her old man is Charlie Regan. And he was standing in the registry office with a cudgel behind his back ready to beat Dickie's brains out if he burked on it. Mm. Now, fact is, he's scared of her old man. And he thinks he can square him by doing a bit of housebreaking while he's on bail and provide for her while he's inside. From housebreaking? Yeah. If you know this, can't you just... I've got a case to prepare. I can't be sitting on his tail for two months. We also have shop break-ins and a silver job. Busy? Yeah. Typing out all the statements on Dickie Fenn. There. You know that lad wants his head felt. It's unbelievable. Listen. The householder saw him and screamed. He was seen running from the house and getting on his motorbike. And he had trouble starting it. The neighbour took the number of the bike. I find the bike in a lock-up near his home, together with the loot. And scenes of crime find a nice set of his prints in the house. And he's got the gall to change his plea. Sergeant Brooks, CID. Who is it? It's Harry, Mr Brook. Harry Dean. You asked me about that silver job. Any luck? Well, it ain't easy, Mr Brook. I've been all around, but nobody knows a thing. If you could tell me where that piece of silver was picked up, maybe I'll... You could... surprise me. I thought you were the eyes and ears of this little world. Not a sparrow could fall, but you would be told about it. Oh, it's all right making fun, Mr. Brook, but this is big stuff. I mean, to move a ton and a half of silver as fast as that, you've got to be organised and have muscle. I mean, I can't go around shouting. Does anybody know who Nick? All right, all right, all right. Do your best. Mr. Brook? Yeah? There will be a reward for this one. An insurance reward. Yeah, but you've got to be quick. Bye. Was that about the silver? Yeah. Who was it? What you don't know, you can't tell. And as he said, these people are organised and have muscle. We just wait. I wait. And you get out on that factory in the three shops that were done. Right. CID, Sergeant Brooke. Yeah. Who is it? It's me, Mr Brooke. Dickie. Dickie Fenn. What do you want? Well, I got bail. I know you got bail. It's caused trouble, isn't it? You'll have to help us, Mr Brooke. Us? My wife, Mr Brooke. Both of us. We're in dead trouble, Mr Brooke. You'll have to help us today. Please. OK, Dickie, I'll see you. Where do we meet? Could you come to the house, Mr Brook? We'll both be waiting. Sure, I'll come now, Dickie. Max, come back. What is it? Our little housebreaker needs help. He got bail this morning and he's in trouble already. We're going to see him. We? Oui. You're coming as a witness. Dickie Fenn is on bail. I'll be preparing the case, giving evidence against him. When I go to see him, I take a witness. You understand? Yes, I understand. You're learning. I'll just let Mr Roach know I'm seeing him. Who's there? Who is it? It's Sergeant Brooks. Stop mucking about, Dickie, and open it. Sorry about all that, Mr Brook. I have to be careful. Well, come in, please. And your friend. The wife's gone to bed, Mr Brooks. She's all upset. We'll go in the kitchen. Sit down, Mr Brook. Will you have a beer? No, thank you. I've just come to hear what the trouble is. It's the landlord, Mr Brook. He's threatening us. Oh, for God's sake, Diggy. I'm called here for that. You've been in Nick and you haven't paid your rent. No, Mr Brook. I paid the rent. It's something else. He wants to throw us right out in the street. 
and Anita in her condition. Only you can help us. He'll listen to the law. And why is he throwing you out? It was what you said in court. Some of the neighbours was there and they came and told him. And he was in here shouting at Anita before I even got back. He was trying to drag her out. We've got two hours to leave. Because of what I said? He says he doesn't want such a low class a tenant. <laughs> and him such a high class a landlord. Will you speak to him? Yeah. And I'll have that beer as well. And one for my friend. Right away, Mr Brook. You know, Dickie, you've got a nerve. This morning you dropped me right in it and this afternoon you're asking for my help. I've no one else to turn to, Mr Brook. You've always been good to me. And he'll listen to the law. It's a can, all right? Yeah. Will you speak to him now? Dickie, if I'm to help you, you have to help me. How? Well, you're a thief. You know what goes on. There were four break-ins on my ground last night. A factory and three shops. Do you think I did it? Don't be daft. Last night you were in custody. I'm asking if you know anything. If I'm to help you, I need something in return. Sure. That landlord really scared her, Mr Brook. Tried to drag her to the door. She was screaming. You will talk to him? Yeah. I'll have a word with him. And you're going to tell me something. I haven't heard anything about last night, Mr Brook. But I could give you a place to look at. OK. A do-it-yourself shop down the end of Church Street. A one-window, one-door kind of place. Do you know it? Yeah, I know it. Everything in the windows are kind of old and faded. Look, don't go around the houses. I know the place. Do you know it's been taken over about three months ago by Parsons? Peter Parsons? Yeah. He don't sell much do it yourself, but he bought it because it's got a big storeroom. You're saying he has stolen gear there? I'm saying a lot of the stuff nicked on your manor finds its way there, but you'd have to find it. It's got this front door in Church Street and another door in the lane. You'd have to go in from both sides. Thanks, Dickie. You'll speak to my landlord. His name's Patel, lives in the basement. Sure, I'll talk to him. Right, we'll show ourselves out. And mind you answer your bail. Yes, Mr Brook. Mr Patel back down fast enough? Well, Mr Patel was afraid I'd check the entry permits of his three newly arrived nephews. That was why he was all smiles and apologies. You think they're illegal? I don't care what they are. It isn't one of my problems. So long as they behave themselves, they don't bother me. But I won't have him threatening my villains. Are you going to search that do-it-yourself shop? Yeah. We get a search warrant? Don't be soft. We say we're chasing a stray cat. And while you chat him up, I'll have a furtive look saying, Pussy, pussy, pussy. <laughs> You're joking. Now, don't bet on it. But first you'll check with the rating officer and see if Peter Parsons is the new owner. And if he is, he's got enough form to merit a visit. Jim. You got a minute? Yes, Dave. Then I want you. Do you know the uh, do-it-yourself shop in Church Street? Right. Grubby little place down by the end. Yeah, that's it. A little bird tells me it's got a big storeroom. Yeah, what's the interest? Well, we had three shop break-ins last night. Quite a load of merchandise taken. Yeah. I want you to watch the place as from now. In half an hour, Max and I will go in the front door. I want to know who runs out the back door. Is the old man busy? You better ask him. Right. It's open. Anything new on the silver, sir? Well, the squad's been here all morning. They've taken possession of the silver ingot. They've dug up the vacant ground in Miller Street where it was found. They've towed the van away to Forensic and now they've gone off to Lambeth. Why? Well, they think the stuff is there. Oh, good. Still... Still what? Well, that silver bar we had, it didn't walk here by itself. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing, sir. Oh, I may have a lead on last night's shop breaking. Oh? I'm going to have a look. Can I have three extra men? No. I haven't got any to spare. Well, if I'm right, we'll have some searching to do. Just for today. Oh, all right. I'll try and find you a couple. Chief Inspector Roach, who is it? Oh, yes, of course, sir. It's the squad again. <laughs> Bye, sir. <sighs> no one around. Shop! Yes, sirs, what can I do for you? Oh, well, 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 if it isn't Sergeant Brooke. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Parsons. Good afternoon, my dear sir. And uh, who is your friend? This is Detective Constable Maxton. And this Max is Mr. Peter Parsons, known as Peter the Great, Peter the Parson, and sometimes as the Padre. <laughs> your friend has an engaging sense of humour. Uh, commendable in a policeman, I'm sure. At any moment, he'll pass around the hat. And uh, what can I do for you, Sergeant? You could invite me into your storeroom. And uh, if I said no? You could stay here and amuse my colleague, and I'll go through by myself. Very well, follow me. And uh, this is the storeroom. It is quite big. On the bill of sale, it was deemed spacious. Is it always so full? Oh, it's deceptive, Sergeant. Half of the stuff is only here for repair. Well, I like to help my neighbours. Troublesome grass mower, the faulty sewing machine, the wayward grandfather clock. They're all brought here. Do you mind if I look around? <laughs> what do you expect to see? If I told you, Padre, it would vanish like a puff of smoke. Just let me look. Of course. Right, thank you. Maxton, is that your name? Yes. Mm, I had a friend, Maxton, uh, from Devon. Lots of relatives there. And the churchyard full of ancient headstones with a family name. Are you from Devon? No. But uh, a good education, a good school. I won't ask why you joined the police. Why not? Not for me to say. If Mr. Brook tries to compensate with a sense of humour. What was that, Pete? Uh, nothing, Mr. Brook. I was discoursing on the merits of a good education. Then perhaps your education will tell you what this is. What, what is? This. Now that, my good friend, is a bar of solder. It's an awful lot of solder. I have a lot of repairs to do, as you can see. Yes. Is that all? No. If you'll amuse my colleague for a few more minutes, I'll answer that. It might be a private call. It won't embarrass me. Bobby Shaw? Is the Padre there? No, he's just stepped out for a minute. Who's that? Uh, this is um, Alfie, friend of the Padre's. Can I take a message? Uh, yeah, all right. Tell him it's off until tomorrow, but someone will see him in a couple of hours. Yeah, I'll tell him. Can I say who? It's off until tomorrow, Padre. I don't know what you mean. No, but you look pleased. What's off until tomorrow? Cross my heart, I've no idea. Then think of this. It is off until tomorrow, but someone is coming to see you in a couple of hours. So, just sit down and be good. You can keep Max company while I nip out for a jiff. Max, don't let him scarper. As an educated man, Mr. Maxton, you must know that this is all very illegal. Your friend is here without a warrant. I could have asked to see a warrant, but I didn't. And what do I get for my cooperation? You'll have to wait and see. I ask you. Where are the Sherlock Holmeses of yesteryear? Gone. All we have today are the bumbling Lestrades. Tell me, my friend, why did he come here? Was some uh, frightened little burglar trying to get him off his back and did he point him in this time-wasting direction? Are you saying this place is clean? Clean as a whistle, my friend. What about the phone call? It is off until tomorrow and someone will come in a couple of hours. <laughs> I ask you. <laughs> People around here are like that. Well, I suppose we must be patient. Jim? Did anyone run out as we went in? No, it's been quiet. Find anything? A large bar of solder. It happens to weigh five pounds, and it just happens to have a bullion merchant stamp on it, so it happens to be an ingot of silver. Oh, we told a squad. No. But Dave... The man said his solder, didn't he? So his solder. Maybe I didn't happen to look underneath. Anyway, I'm supposed to be looking for stuff nicked from shops. Go and keep Max company, and don't let Parsons move. Don't let him answer the phone. And if anyone comes to the back door, detain them. Right. I'm going to get some lads to help us. 
What is it? You promised some lads, sir. Did you have any luck? Well, Parsons Place is stacked to the ceiling with junk and I want to turn it over. How long? Take about an hour. How are the squad doing? Well, they're still down in Lambeth. Have you heard anything about the silver? No, sir. But you said some men. Two. You can have Anderson and Flynn. Anyone been here, Jim? Nah, it's been quiet. Uh, Dave, Mr. Parsons assures us that the place is clean. It is indeed. Well, that is because Mr. Parsons thinks it will take us too long to search through all his junk, or thinks we're too lazy. So Mr. Parsons is perforce and hopefully assuring one and all that his shop is clean. Perforce? I like the way you use words, Sergeant. It shows there is hope for the most humble amongst us. But not too much hope for you. I've brought two more DCs to search the room. Here you come. Flynn, Anderson, and you, Jim, and Max. One at each corner and work to the middle. Right. Look, so right. It's this great mound of rubbish. It's as big as a haystack. You can complain about that to Mr. Parsons, but you are searching it. Oh, we start at the top. No, you're looking for something very heavy. It'll be stashed on the floor. So start at each of the four corners and burrow through like termites. And don't waste time. Right. Well, Mr. Parsons, what do you think they'll find? Now, from what they're doing, I would say mouse droppings. Or more bars of solder. Let's turn your bar of solder over and look. It's silver. You surprise me. You didn't know? I think it was here when I came. Hey, I found something. Well, bring it over. Uh, is this what you want? Yeah, this is one. Any more? I have one. Look, I don't want them in ones and twos. How many are there? There's a stack of them on the floor, in the middle of that lot. Right, go in and count them. And now, Mr. Parsons. Tell me, Sergeant, how did you know? Just pure deduction, Padre. I was told that you'd taken this shop. Then I remembered that the van had been abandoned not very far away, and that a bar of the silver was found just over there in Miller Street, between the van and here. <sighs> like a paper chase. <laughs> and they seemed so efficient. <laughs> All that organisation and planning and split-second timing. And then they leave the van on my doorstep. Were you in on it? Of course not. I was told they were going to use my storeroom. Just like that, an emissary came and told me. And they came this morning? Yes. Who are they? You know quite well that I never talk about others. It could cost you. It always has. But that's life. We've counted. And including what's on the table and the one that was found... It makes 400. Half the load. What's the value? Yeah, 120,000. Uh, may I answer it? No. Well, they'll expect someone to answer. Huh? Jim! Answer it! OK. Uh, hobby shop? You hang up. You frightened them off. No, we haven't. Ben, coming into the lane. What do they look like? Well-dressed. One looks like a businessman. One looks like a bouncer. He is a bouncer. It's Tom Sharp. It's them. Parsons, you just sit there and say hello when they come in. We've got the cash for you, Pete. Just put it on the table. Who the hell are you? We're police officers. There are squad cars... Get it! Oh! 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 Who did that? He hit Max. So I hit him. You all right, Max? I'll be okay in a minute. You're going to have a real shiner, isn't it, Jim? Oh, yes. It's going to be a beaut. Sergeant, it was your duty to pass this information on to the squad. They walked in on us, sir. It was our duty to arrest them. You will pass them on now. They assaulted two of your officers, sir. We must charge them, and then we'll pass them on. Hmm. The silver is still being guarded. And the squad can have the honour of loading it. Detective, Detective Sergeant Brooke was Ray Brooks, Detective Constable Maxton, Christopher Blake, Chief Inspector Roach, David Dacre, and Detective Constable Harrison, Peter Cleel. Dickie Fenn, Bill Nye, Peter Parsons, Derek Francis, Harry Dean, George Tovey, Clark, Peter Baldwin, and Magistrate Brian Haynes. Detective was written by Robert Barr and produced by Martin Fisher.